I would like to welcome you all in the lecture series of Basic Electrical Engineering. In this session, I will be discussing um, Set 2 Basic Electrical Engineering 21 Scheme Question Paper Discussion. I have already completed three parts in the last sessions. Kindly go through that video first. Later, we will move on to this particular video. So, in this session, I am going to discuss question number 8B. Kindly read out question number 8B. A 3 phase 16 pole alternator has a star connected winding with 144 slots and 10 conductors per slot. Yes, the flux per pole is 0.03 Weber's, sign distributed, and the speed is 375 rpm. The frequency, comma, the phase and line voltages are to be calculated. The weightage is 6. First of all, I request everyone uh, to recall the concept of alternator and uh, you should know the equation for EMF. We already derived in the question number 8a, either question has been uh, repeated based on the derivation of EMF equation. So, I already explained what is the EMF equation of alternator. The same equation need to be recalled. Here, first of all, you have to mention what are the parameters they have given. Kindly note down. I will show you how to solve this. You need to know the fundamentals of EMF equation. Okay. So, please rewrite the EMF equation once. Let me show you the given data, number of poles, then set phase. Set phase means the total conductors will be 144 into 10 based on the slots. It will be 480. Set phase. Okay. That means the conductor per phase. Then T phase means set phase divided by 2. That you have to remember always. The number of turns per phase will be equal to so half of uh, set phase. Set phase means total number of conductors. That is 240. So it is not given directly. You have to calculate it. Flux is already given 0 0.03. Then N is also provided 375 RPM. Anyway, first question is frequency. What is the frequency? What is the frequency of generation? Pn by 120. You can get 50 Hz. You will get 2 marks. Let me write the equation for EMF. E phase. E EMF equation per phase. 4.44 Fi. T phase, Kp and Kd. This is regarding pitch factors and distribution factors. That you can assume it as 1. Not given in the data. You have to assume it is 1. E phase equal to after substituting you are able to get the following values. E phase will be 1598.4 volt. You know that line voltage because I need to calculate the line voltage. What is the relation between line voltage and phase voltage in star connection? Line voltage is equal to root 3 times phase voltage. So I will be writing El is equal to root 3 E phase. Definitely you can able to get the line voltage as 2768.51 volt. This problem is quite important for your university point of view. I request everyone to practice once or twice. In case any clarification, please revert. Surely I will get back to you. Okay, go through this. Individually you can go through that how to calculate T phase, how to calculate Z phase. So you should have a good idea. So I request everyone to go through that before appearing for the university examination. So I am going to move on another question. Please look at question number 8C. What is question number 8C? So please read the question. Uh, when a three phase supply is given to the three phase induction motor, explain how rotative magnetic field is produced in the air gap of the machine. You know that uh, the resultant flux is equal to 1.5 into total flux. Okay, 1.5. So that point you have to explain. What is the concept of rotative? The meaning of the question is do explain how the rotative magnetic, is pro magnetic field is produced in three phase induction motor. Let's get started how to explain this in a clear fashion. Question number 8C, all of you go through the answer key so that you will get an idea. So how to answer this? Yes, first of all, it is better to draw a relevant diagram, okay, related to star connection or delta star or delta. Uh, you can mention the stator winding, what about the displacement between each and every winding, 120 degree, you can mention directly. Then you can mention the sinusoidal flux, phi r equal to phi m sin omega t, phi y is equal to phi m sin omega t minus 120, phi b is equal to phi m sin omega t minus 240 or plus 120, anything is okay. So do mention clearly, resultant flux is the sum of individual uh, flux corresponding to the phases, phi r plus phi y plus phi b. Vector diagram has to be drawn, you will be getting 2 marks. From that vector diagram, apply the parallelogram law of vector addition, then you will be getting resultant flux is equal to 1.5 times of the maximum flux. This equation you have to derive. Then your job will be completed. You will be getting maximum credit. In the earlier session, I have missed one question. So all of you go through that. Uh, to operate the transformer in maximum efficiency always, derive what condition, at what condition this can be achieved. 
so you already learned about transformers so you have to derive the condition for maximum efficiency how to do that i'll be showing you you know that transformer is a static device uh, it shows highest efficiency compared to other type of rotating machine anyway what is efficiency it is a ratio of output to the input so look at the equations so output to the input so in uh, the output can be written as input minus losses am i right or not yeah therefore input minus what are the major losses in transformer the first one is copper loss another one is core loss so instead of losses i have to put copper loss and core loss like this uh, that means input power minus copper loss minus core loss divided by input power so if you write like this you will be getting one marks now what you can do is what is input power v1 i1 cos phi1 how to calculate copper loss i1 square r01 r01 is the winding resistance and then core loss can be written as w subscript i wi so there are two type of core loss no need to mention like uh, hysteresis and uh, eddy current loss generally you can maintain it as uh, iron loss or core loss that is wi divided by v1 i1 cos phi1 later on you can simplify like uh, a minus b minus c divided by d is equal to a by d minus b by d minus c by d simple mathematics so v1 i1 cos phi1 by v1 i1 cos phi1 minus i1 square r01 divided by v1 i1 cos phi1 minus w i divided by v1 i1 cos phi1 so first term will be always one only the second term i1 will be cancelled at once a third term as it is now you can apply the principle of maxima or minima according to principle of maxima or minima identify the variable variable is i1 only okay because uh, i1 current is actually getting varied so d eta by d i1 is equal to zero where eta is the efficiency but i would like to calculate what is the maximum efficiency so if i do the differentiation individually you can do the differentiation you will be getting i1 square r01 is equal to wi or else wi is equal to i1 square r01 what does it mean can you imagine that yeah very simple i1 square r01 is nothing but copper loss what is wi wi means iron loss so ultimately iron loss will be equal to core loss this is your condition for maximum efficiency you are informed to derive the expression for condition for maximum efficiency so this is the way how to answer this question see the mass distribution so first one you can write the basic equation then uh, you come back to the equation with the certain variables then divide accordingly and then you have to recall the principle of maxima or minima theory then do the differentiation it's a uh, simple it's a, a systematic procedure please undergo the systematic procedure such that you can able to get the complete score finally you should write iron loss will be equal to core loss so this is what uh, the examiners are expecting from student side so you need to satisfy all the requirements such that you can able to get the maximum they can provide the maximum score all right now let's come back to the question paper so now we could uh, discuss uh, the main thing is uh, question number 7 uh, and 8 okay and the module for we could able to identify the important questions and uh, how to answer accordingly in the next session i am going to discuss the important question from module 5 anyway thank you for watching this video and uh, thank you for your continuous support and uh, please share with your friends those who are preparing for university examination thank you